<clears throat> All right. Well, hello and welcome, you guys. Welcome and hello. Today is Mother Truckin' Thursday, which means it's Mother Truckin' Thursday. The stand sticker keeps falling off of my little microphone stand, but welcome, you guys. Got a full-on action-packed vlog for you guys tonight. Uh, no timestamps on the screen anymore. Haven't been able to do that for like two years now. For anybody watching on the replay, all of the timestamps are going to be the first pinned comment right underneath this video. My main man, Jeremy V, he collects all the timestamps. They're going to be that first pinned comment right underneath this video. And if I can find the time tonight after the vlog, I'm going to try to take Jeremy's timestamps and turn them into chapters, like at the bottom of the YouTube video. So you can just see where all of the segments are. I mean, I've never done that before, uh, and I think it would be so so fucking wicked, super cool. But let me do a quick, let me do a quick rundown for you. Um, of course, we're going to talk a little bit about what I've been vaping. I have a beer that I think I'm going to go ahead and go on record and say it's my favorite beer. It's just my favorite beer. Uh, we have an epic, epic retro vaping. Got a little bit of mail here. We're going to toss in a little bit of news and advocacy. I got a very random liquid tasting that I'm going to need your guys' help with, but. Uh, First things first, I can't I can't believe he said yes. I can't believe he said yes, but I have a I have a guest here today that's going to help me kick off the vlog. Yeah, I got a guest. Uh he he's called in uh via Zoom. Uh so let's just bring him on now. My special guest is going to help me kick off the vlog. Um ladies and gentlemen, this is Governor Andrew Cuomo. Vaping is oh, better just, than he's just going to do that. He's just going to do that again. Technically, uh, yes, but uh, look, so what? Look, I don't have time. I don't, I don't, have, I don't have time for that, Andrew Cuomo. You know, I thought you were going to be a good guest. I thought we were going to have a grown-up discussion, but uh, you can just acknowledge the health benefits of vaping and then just say, "So what?" Fucking Andrew Cuomo. So I can't believe that. What a, what a jerk. Do I overuse the Governor Andrew Cuomo bit a little bit too much? Well, technically, yes, but so what? Anyway, let's uh, let's get let's really get rolling into this vlog here now. Uh, I want to do that thing that is my new favorite thing, where I get to hear from one of my subscribers. Right now, I'd like to hear from uh, from Manny. What say you, Manny? Hey, Grim. My name is Manny. I'm from South Florida. Just want to thank you for everything that you do. Also want to shout out the Florida Smoke Free Association. They just helped get SB810, the Florida flavor ban, vetoed. Um, want to shout out my local shop, Diamond Vapor. Uh, they've been open throughout this whole pandemic, helping people stay vaping and not switching back to smoking. I got my Titan V2 with Rocket Blast, all day vape. So yeah, thank you and let's keep on vaping. Uh, yeah, boosh. Absolutely, Manny. Florida Smoke Free Association, we're shouting them out. We're shouting out Diamond Vapor for Manny. On behalf of Manny, to everybody at Diamond Vapor, boosh, there's a, there's a fist bump shout out for you. If anybody else out there, you know, has a video similar to Manny's or you're planning on shooting a video similar to Manny's and you want to see it featured on this here vlog, you can do that. It's real easy. You can send them on over to me, Nick at grimgreen.com. Just mark your subject, that one thing. Chances are I'll see the attachment and, and I'll get and I'll save it and we'll save it and we'll put it in a vlog. But literally literally anything. Everybody's got a smartphone. You just pick up your phone. You just speak into it. Shout your shop out. Uh, shout your favorite gear out. Shout your liquid out. Shout someone else in the chat out. Like my head, my, I would be blown away if Lo, maybe Logan Exhale send in, sends in a video and he's like, I just want to shout out Mowgli Vapes from your chat. That's what I like to see. I like to see people coming. To, can you do that for me? That's a specific request for Logan X. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, Logan. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. Um, but we have started the vlog officially now. We've seen Governor Andrew Cuomo's face. So uh, I I'm going to need a beer to get me through this vlog. So what we're going to be tasting tonight is I think, I think, I think my favorite beer. Let's, let's crack into it. Oh, baby. 
That's right. Tonight, it's going to be all about Goulden Drock. This comes to me courtesy of uh, Mike Sullivan. Mike Sullivan was enough to send me, uh, was kind enough to send me over some Goulden Drock to do for this beer tasting here. Let's see what... Uh, Let's see what Beer Advocate has to say just about it. I don't need my, you know, my opinions of this beer reinforced because I just love this beer. I just completely love this beer. And this beer is honestly a little bit sentimental to me. Opening it with that, uh, you know, it's the it's the Grim Army. Uh, <laughs> it's the Grim Army. Sorry, that's the Kiss Army. Shit. Sorry, Gene. Sorry, Gene. This is a very sentimental beer for me. You know, back when I lived up in the Reno, Nevada area, me and my real good buddy, Richard Wiley, we'd go out and go beer shopping. You know, we'd go to a bunch of different little little brew places, little brew houses, little tasting rooms. We'd go, sometimes go to Whole Foods because they have just, you know, an amazing selection of beer. And uh, one time when we were out shopping, I picked up a Golden Drock and drank it at his house at, right after band practice and couldn't drive home. I said, Rich, I'm gonna have to hang here for like two hours because I this is too much alcohol for me. It's a nice, nice 10 percenter here. Nice 10 percenter. Gonna be pouring this into a shimmy goblet style glass. It's just gonna pour just just that beautiful dark brown amber color of Guldendrock. This is just a, a wonderful liquid. It's a wonderful liquid to put in your face. And it's a good thing it's not a, a real big one. Because then that, I mean, then that would really mess me up. That would really, really very much mess me up. This is the classic Golden Drock, uh, a dark red triple, dark red Belgian triple ale. Uh, unbelievable. Anyway, uh, cheers. Here's to you guys. Hope you got something uh, cold and frosty next to your vape. Yeah, dude. It's just good. It's just incredible. Right out of the gate, it's a high, little high of an ABV. So I get like a, a boozy start to this. And then it ends up with like some low note sweetness like dates. I get like a, a like a malty sweet date, like dates from it. Not like dates, but like dates. <laughs> you know, not dates, but dates. Let's see what it says here on the... Uh, Beer Advocate, yeah, triple dark ale brewed with caramel and malt and re-fermented with Bordeaux wine yeast. Well, slap my fancy pants. That just sounds ridiculous. Also, slap my fancy pants? What does that even mean? Let's see what one of these reviewers had to say about it. Uh, looks great. Smells a little like iron. No, oh, you're crazy. But the finish is what makes this remarkable. A little bit of tangy feel on the tongue, uh, but quite smooth and delicious. Definitely a sipper. Yeah, this is a uh, this is a sipper. This isn't a beer that you glug glug. You know, this isn't Bud Light. This isn't Heineken. You don't glug glug this beer. You sip. You sit. You savor. You cherish. Welcome to the Finer Things Club. Um, uh, it's just effing delicious. In fact, this might pair with it really well. This is that, uh, this is the random liquid tasting from last week, dude. It's that Final Boss Vapes, I can't remember what it's called, Hydra. Final Boss Vapes Hydra, that is the cornflake, 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 milky sweet cornflake thing. Uh, it's delicious and I've, I've been continuously vaping it since. <clears throat> okay, look, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, that was burp life action. Let's have a little beer pairing. Cheers. Yeah, that's incredible. That's the, that's one of the most single delightful beer pairings I've ever had in my life. They complement each other so well. It actually makes the Golden Drock taste a little bit sweeter than it already is. It's already got a little bit of sweetness to it. Huh. Huh. <laughs> yeah f and a cotton f and a that's delicious so one more time thank you mike sullivan for sending those over now that i got some beer in me i think we can attack some of these super chats <laughs> what's going on over here will will boils 
Uh, did I join in just to donate, then leave? Technically, yes. But so what? I'll catch the replay. Thank you. I, I, I appreciate that, Governor. I, I appreciate that, Will. So what? Uh, Barbara, shout, shout out to my cousin Barbara. Cousin Will and Pounder for fixing my toilet. Well, there you go, Barbara. I that's who I don't know who's Pounder. Is that a person? Is that a device? Uh -oh. Is that a is that an unclogging? I have no idea. Real Jim Shady. Did you try the coffee? <laughs> Keep up the good work, bro. Here's the thing, Real Jim Shady. It's caffeinated coffee, so I have to wait until this weekend. In fact, I don't know, maybe tomorrow. Maybe to, Friday kind of starts the weekend, right? Friday kind of starts the weekend. So maybe I'll do it tomorrow. Real Jim Shady, appreciate you. Uh, Benjamin Dover, uh, shall I crack open a can of Sweet Baby Jesus? Well, damn, you should. Here, let me bless it for you first. Oh, he, he, he. There you go. Have some Sweet Baby Jesus, Benjamin. Uh, Jessica Gordon, that's very gracious of you. I haven't seen a vlog in three weeks. And I'm just glad to be here, yo yo. Freaking yo yo, Jessica Gordon. Thank you for being here. Mike Sullivan. Uh, Nick Green, my birthday is Sunday. <gasps> Mike Sullivan's birthday is Sunday. Happy birthday to Mike Sullivan. And his birthday's on Sunday. Happy birthday to Mike Sullivan. His birthday's on Sunday. Happy birthday to uh, Mike Sullivan. <coughs> Pardon me. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Mike Sullivan. I hope you have a really spectacular day. Uh, Dan Baker, hashtag juice my way. He says, streaming live into my into my groups. Grim, huge. What's up, brother? Keep doing what you're doing. Hashtag juice my way. Bro, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that very much, Dan Baker. And then lastly, we got my man, Southern Comfort. Uh, are you telling stories about band camp? <laughs> Maybe. No, I'm not telling stories about band camp, but we are going to be talking about uh, an old band I was in. You know, I can't, I, I'm really excited about the, uh, about today's getting to know Grim Green. Here's the thing. I don't know what to do next. I don't know where we're at right now. Do you want to do some mail first? Do you want to do some news and advocacy first? I feel like we always throw the news and advocacy in there early, but I kind of want to do the mail. I don't have a bunch of it. I got some You Don't Know Nicotine merch. Look at this. Right there. You Don't Know Nicotine. The big premiere is this weekend in Milwaukee. I can't be there, but I'm hoping it goes amazingly well uh, i hope i wish aaron so much success with this movie what's great is after this weekend we're gonna start getting like the first impressions of this movie i you know and i haven't seen it yet and i'm dying to see it but uh let's do it let's just do some uh let's just do whatever little mail that i have here now let's do that mail Yeah, I, I still believe about the citrus, citrus scented garbage bags. In fact, I think the other items that I have in here are the rest of my you don't know nicotine order. I made a you don't know nicotine order from their their web store. It, like they, it's like their merch store. Oh yeah, shit. Oh, right, let's do what I've been vaping after mail. Let's mix this up completely, Miller Man Chris. Let's mix this up completely. How's the sticky maple? Oh, it's delicious. I see, that's what I like to, 11.3%, welcome to the party, pal. Welcome to the party, pal. Uh, I ordered some, uh, you know, some stuff from the You Don't Know Nicotine uh, web store. You know, I wanna help Aaron out uh, as much as humanly possible. So let's just break this open. And I think this is my, uh, yeah. Yes. And here is what I'm going to be drinking out uh, my coffee out of, Real Jim Shady. Yeah, I got myself a You Don't Know Nicotine mug. I kind of just went a little crazy. This product contains caffeine. Caffeine is an addictive chemical. <laughs> I didn't know that was on the back. I love the crap out of that. I love the crap out of that. I kind of want to pour the rest of the beer into this You Don't Know Nicotine mug, but we're not going to do that. No, 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 we're not going to do that right now. We're, not, we're just not going to. In fact, I think this is the poster. I had I ordered a poster and I ordered a t-shirt, and I ordered a mug. 
And I'm 100% sure this is the poster. I don't know what else it could be. Yeah, oh, it is. Oh, it definitely is. Oh, yeah. I don't, don't want to open this right now. This is the You Don't Know Nicotine movie poster. Oh, and they rolled it up from the bottom. I just wanted to see my name. My name is on the poster, you guys. I'm just really excited. Like, I'm, I'm just really excited for this movie. I'm just going to open this. Let's open this. Let's just look at it. It's the eyeball, you know? Ha 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 ha! Oh, shit! Look at that! And look at that! Nick Green! I'm on this... I'm on, my name is on a movie poster with Stanton Glantz. That's the, that's the most epic thing that I could possibly think of happening right now. My name. Nick Green. On a movie poster with Stanton Glantz. Just let that sink in for a second. This is a nice poster. This is a high quality poster. Uh, I have frames for it. I'm gonna get another frame for it and I'm gonna hang it somewhere in my office. I redid my office a little bit, considering doing like a, uh, you know, another office tour soon. I never really did an office tour of any of my old offices before, but uh, you know, people been asking, so I might just do it. Huge shout out to Matt Sinister for the rad Rad movie poster behind me. Ha, <laughs> get it? It's rad. Literally, it's rad. This could be Coils. Nathan. This could be Coils. Coils is one of those things that I never say no to. If anybody ever wants to send me Coils, I just say yeah. Hell yeah. I got stuff to build. I do build streams. I'll use them. Of course. And plus, I like it. I like people's like handcrafted little coils. Like someone spent the time... To do this, it might not even be coils. Yo, yo! Oh no, this is a uh, sleepy Nate. I really thought these were coils. Is Kent here? I heard Kent's here. Is that true? You guys, uh, I have. A, there's going to be episode, episode six of the Full Grim podcast. Uh, is me and I sit down with Kent Hill, Twisted Messes, and it's one of the best podcasts that I've ever recorded. I, I, in history ever, I think. Uh, and that's going to be up, I think this, this weekend, Saturday or Sunday, I, I reached the, the limit, you know, of, uh, of how much I can upload. That's okay. Nick, here are some mask nose clips to keep the steam off of your glasses. This gift is worth its weight in gold, uh, as well as a few strap adjusters to save your ears. Uh, I sent plenty since uh, they inevitably break. Okay, you can sanitize them with isopropyl or delivered. Okay, diluted bleach. If you need to shape them, submerge them in warm water. Just be gentle. Uh, Jenny's are the best tasting and most convenient Addies. What? What are you talking about, Sleepy Nate? That makes no sense, Sleepy Nate. Look, if you like a Genesis atomizer, then that's between you and your Genesis atomizer. I hope I tricked you into saying that live on the stream. Yeah, you definitely did, Sleepy Nate. In fact, I'm not keeping this note. I'm just kidding. I'm going to keep it. I keep it all. I keep all the notes, damn it. So what Sleepy Nate did is he makes these, uh, he 3D printed these. And if I take this mask, my Stormtrooper mask that my mom sent me, my mom and you slip it into these little clips. I'm assuming this is how this is gonna work. Oh, okay, I see, it's a little, it's a little, it's a little tricky. It's a little tricky to get on. This is, this is impossible to get on, Sleepy Nate. Oh no, there it goes, okay. Oh, they really hold on there. Oh, I, I broke it, I definitely broke it. But the idea is, it, it, it forms to the mask and makes a nose bend for you and holds it down against your face so that when you're, yeah, I broke one. I already broke one, Sleepy Nate. I already broke one so that it doesn't constantly fog up your glasses when you're wearing your mask. Thank you, Sleepy Nate. I already broke one, just one, just broken in half. Thank you, I'm glad you didn't send me like three. I'm glad you sent me like 50. Because uh, chances are I'll, I'll break them. I'll break some more. <laughs> chances are I'll break some more in there. Anyway, appreciate that. Oh, yeah, and look. This is one on the, on the back side. Oh, I see. So you can put it like around your head and hook the mask to this. It's like the back of a snapback hat. Sleepy Nate's a genius. I'm just going to throw that out there. Sleepy Nate, I appreciate those. Appreciate those. 
And then lastly, see, I told you we didn't have a lot of mail. Just a little bit of mail tonight. Lastly, I got something from DHL, and I'm hoping that this is one of two things. I'm hoping that this is either something from, uh, I'm hoping that this is either something from Aspire. Ah, uh, it's neither. Um, I was hoping it was something from either from Aspire or from UL because I'm waiting on that new Caliburn V2. But instead, what we got was the Univapio Unix kit. Yeah. I mean, this, be honest, this product looks like it could have come out maybe in like 2014. Do I do it? Okay. Look, everything goes through the system, right? Everything goes through the system. I have to give it a fair shake. I have to see if it's, you know, how long it stays on the desk. I have to give it a fair shake. So what choice do I have? Okay. This is bullshit. Okay. I just want to get a look at it. Yeah, I mean, this tank is a really retro-y looking style tank. That looks like something Kanger could have released like a few years ago, you know? I'm dying. I'm dying for the Cali Bean, Caliburn V2 and I'm dying for the, uh, oh, it's not too bad. It's kind of a slick little guy. Who knows? I'll set it up later at some point, maybe, hopefully. Look, it has to go through the system, I know. I know it has to go through the system. So that's kind of, that's, there we go. That's some vape mail. Let me put my illegal in California knife away. That's some vape mail right there. Did, uh, did any more super chats come in? I wasn't paying attention. Uh, let's see. Uh, no, it was Mike Sullivan's birthday. It was Southern Comfort. New Wave Dave, just because this citrus OG told me to. Oh, I see what happened there. Your, your cannabis told you to give me $2. Well, when your cannabis talks, you listen, my friend. Uh, Benjamin Dover, sweet baby Jesus, chocolate and PB Porter pairs well with Cubano. Fuck yeah, everything pairs well with Cubano. Cubano is one of the best tobacco e-liquids in the history of tobacco e-liquids. It's just, it's just unbelievable. Just unbelievable. So real quickly, and I don't have a bumper for this, uh, so what? so let's just real quickly talk about a few things that I've been vaping going completely out of order tonight. As you saw, that's the heavy hitter with the recoil on top. OG recoil Hydra on the inside of that. Been loving that liquid. If we continue down the mech mod path, I got the uh, Arcless V2 from Mech Life. That's a titanium OG recoil on top. I can't put it down. I think there's some more left in stock on recoilrda.com. In fact, I don't know. I don't want to jinx it. I think there's a, a few in stock on recoilrda.com if you want to get yourself a titanium OG. That's filled up with prickly smooth. I literally just opened this bottle like two days ago and I've just been plowing through it. I really like this mech. This mech has impressed the crap out of me. We'll probably get a review really soon. Maybe next week. Even with a dying battery, it still impresses me. Holy shit. Yeah, so that's delicious. And then another mech. Yeah, still hanging on there with that, you know, those upside down crosses. You know, this is why people have the opinion that they do of us because we put skulls on things. And that's... That's why strawberry something is on the inside. Yeah, that's uh, that's banging as well. If we continue in clouds, bro, clouds land. This is kind of like I, this has been on the vlog at least a thousand times. It's been my go-to. The Bogan Odin One Hundred DNA or One Hundred, the Two Hundred and Fifty C version. That's the Reload Vapor 26 millimeter RTA. I think when I get through this tank of liquid, I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna go back to the uh, Aromamizer Plus V2. I think that's where this is headed. I've really been enjoying this Reload. I got it back out again recently from the shelf in my closet because I had just been missing it. Do homeboy's mangoes on the inside? Are you kidding me? 
great. It's just a fantastic vape, but I think I really want to go for that Aromamizer. Now, as you saw, uploaded a review for the Pioneer RTAs. It's on top of the Bogan 100 right there. This is the restricted lung. I have a liquid in here that I thought was going to become a legacy liquid. This is Lemon Life. This is the uh, Cherry Limeade. And I loved this liquid in a billet box. Of course, I have three billet boxes. These are always here. These never go away. These are the three billet boxes. This is Bluegrass. Hi. Meet Bluegrass with the Evil Alien. This is Harold with the Boxer V2 on the inside. This has the Lemon Life in it. And then lastly, we have Golden Boy. We have Golden Boy with the Hakuzeta and some Peach Among Worlds on the inside. Inside a billet box, this Lemon Life liquid is effing delicious 9000. In everything else, it tastes bad. Not bad, just not like it does in that Boxer V2. It's really, it's really bizarre. It's really freaking me out. I bought 760 mils of it because I'm like, oh, I love this. I'm going to stock up. I love this liquid. I'm going to vape so much of it. And now I don't, I don't love it as much. I mean, it's good. It, it's just not the same. You, I'm losing a lot of the cherry. I'm losing, I don't know. It's just weird. Now, if we're going to hop over to, uh, I don't know, Podland. Uh, yeah, this guy. This has been sitting on my desk. This little Lost Vape guy, the, the Gemini Hybrid. It's pretty cool, man. It is pretty cool. I have six milligram uh, water Malone in this. Tasty, tasty, tasty little banger. Now, if we're going to get into my two mouth to lung setups, it's the other Pioneer RTA in mouth to lung mode with some Halo Turkish tobacco on the inside sitting on top of the Dovpo College. Who saw that coming? Dovpo College. Didn't think it would stick around this long. It's made it out of no man's land. It's sitting back on my desk thanks to the Pioneer RTA. Hmm. Uh, that's been uh, really highly enjoyable. Six milligram liquid in there. In fact, hang on. Some of the products featured in this video can contain nicotine. They don't natively come with nicotine in them, but if the user decides to, then they can put nicotine in it if that's how they decide that they want to vape. Doesn't Nicotine's not that bad. Uh, it's about on, on a level with, of caffeine as far as addictiveness goes. Uh, there's zero evidence to show that it harms young people's brains. That's just something that people have been saying. And, and there's, there's actually no evidence to show that. But some of the products on this channel can contain nicotine. Okay, lastly... It's the Inaconceptor. It's sticking around uh, a little bit longer than I thought it was. This has some fruity fizz on the inside from all, all Vape. All Vape, not the real Gerard Butler. What's the name of this? I don't remember what liquid's in here. Uh, delicious, and I'm really glad I got the auto switch working again. This has been like my, uh, my couch vape. I just like sitting on the couch with it. Mm-hmm. Just effortless, just 12 milligram, just freaking deliciousness. So yeah, that's what I've been vaping. Actively vaping, that is what is on the desk right now. And they're all bangers. And I'm not bored of any of them, that's the thing. The only thing I'm gonna switch out is that Reload 26 to maybe the Aromamizer, but otherwise I am really happy and content with everything that I've been vaping. Usually I'll come in here and you know I'll grab one thing to take out with me to the living room or if I go out by the pool or go upstairs and go to bed, I'll take one thing with me. It's been a challenge lately. I'm like, I wanna, I wanna take like four of these. I wanna take like all of these with me everywhere all the time, everywhere I go. It's interesting being just really, really satisfied by everything you have. I'll toast to that. Cheers. So, yeah. Now, moving on from that, I didn't see any more Super Chats pop out. I think there was one in there. Let's see. Uh, ba, 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 Matt Sinister. Ah, check out that effing rad poster. Hashtag Throwdown Thursday. That's right. It's Throwdown <laughs> That's right, it's Throwdown Thursday. In fact, in honor of Throwdown Thursday, let's hydrate ourselves really quick. And I got a clip from uh, <laughs> Mr. Frames Janklin uh, sent me over a clip that I thought was pretty funny. 
Uh, they're all hydrating, so let, let's all hydrate together. Yes. Stay hydrated. We don't have a cool camp video to remind you guys, so I'm just going to check for you. Yeah, just, just remember to I drink your coldest water. Oh, so good. Oh, that's how much I love it. Oh, just, uh, uh, oh. Uh, oh. oh, so good. Oh. And he literally poured it all over. Why did you do that when I was Because I baby. love water. Stay hydrated, Hydro Homies. Shout out Frames Jenklin, uh, the other guy, the the angry hippie, uh, the other guy whose name I can't remember, and then the other guy who dumped water on his head, the other guy whose name I can't remember. I do have to mention that this vlog does actually have an official sponsor. They, I'm sponsored by the coldest water. I'm going to have a link down in the description where you can buy your own coldest water bottle. It's literally the best water bottle that I've ever owned in my life, and it makes a great canvas for uh for stickers this is the newest one over here coil turd got a little coil turd sticker in fact i'm not sure if you can see it but in the d <laughs> in the d over here there's like a scrape i took like a, a chunk out of this water bottle somehow like it's down to the stainless steel and i don't know how i did that it's such a precise little gouge just a just a precise little slice precise slice precise slice precise slice what was this beer? Ten and a half percent. Good job. So uh, let's uh, let's see. I'm again. I'm trying to do this without my stream deck uh, because it ke it keeps sucking butts on me. Let's jump in right now. I, I I've got some rage sweat that we need to get out here. Uh, let's do a little bit of news and advocacy. News and advocacy, yeah. News and advocacy, yeah. So uh, the first thing I want to mention, the first thing I want to mention, I'm going to mention this until it's not a thing anymore. There is still an active CASA call to action. Protect your vape mail, S-1253. That's what we're trying to reject. This has not been voted on yet. And it can get voted on kind of like any day. So I'm going to have a link. In the description, I think Addy Tooney has been adding it to his rotation of links that he adds throughout the show. So uh, click that link, do the call to action, call, do the call to action, call, do the call to action, call, do the call to action, and, and then repeat. I also want to mention this. Uh, it's going to be on this side. Veritas cohort study is still needing people to be part of this study. Canada. Uh, let's see. Uh, United States, it just says United States, several locations. If you have, if you're a current vapor and you've only smoked 1000 cigarettes in your life, less than 50 packs, you could be a part of this study. And it's a huge vape study that I think is going to be really, really good. So please sign up, uh, be a part of this study. I think it would be, uh, you know, you would impress me if you emailed me and you said, I signed up for the Veritas cohort study and they accepted me and I'm going to be a part of it. You get my eternal street cred, gratitude, grim green fist bump, whatever, for like the rest of your life. So uh, what else do we have to talk about today? Yeah, yeah. So someone tweeted this at me on Twitter. Someone tweeted this at me on Twitter, a fellow named Jeremy. Um, and this isn't meant to like call any companies out, but it's going to sound like it. And I kind of am. So <laughs> Jeremy says, uh, come on, man, uh, grim green. Tell them why this is not helpful. Someone, and it's a Watofo tweet. And if you look at the Watofo tweet, it's kind of, Watofo, cog mouth to lung RTA and stig mouth, sting mouth to lung RTA, RDA. Have you tried them? And then it's like, they made their RDAs and RTAs into little cartoony guys with faces and sunglasses and their fist bumping and giggling. And look, I'm assuming that Watofo didn't mean any harm from this, right? And maybe because we've been in vaping for so long, or maybe because I've been in vaping so long, and I've seen some really terrible branding, and j just the worst IP theft of branding and child appealing, you know, youth appealing stuff. Maybe I'm just a little bit more sensitive to it. I do feel like this is kind of inappropriate. And I do feel like Watofo, considering that they're aware of the PMTAs and aware of everything that's going on in the United States, I feel like they would know better, a little bit better than to make their RTAs and RDAs into little cartoon characters. You know, 
We're, we're trying to fight the war on vaping right now. <laughs> and this kind of stuff with Tofo mm, doesn't really help very much. So if you could knock that off with Tofo, I think that would be fantastic. Uh, and again, I don't like. I don't think Watofo meant any harm when they did this. I think it's just Watofo. Just you know, you could picture a boardroom and some guy goes, "What if we put uh, like sunglasses on him and made him fist bumping?" And everyone's like, "Oh yeah, that, sure, that, let's do that. Sure, get, let's get creative on it right now. They can do that. They can set that up. It's just a bad idea. We're we're trying to fight the war on vaping right now, man. Oh, and it's a war. Oh, it's a war because of. People like this. Okay, I'm going to just be angry at the World Health Organization for just a hot minute because the World Health Organization has rage sweated me into an oblivion. Oblivion. World Health Organization tweeted and said, smokeless tobacco, including chewing or vaping, is responsible for roughly 200,000 deaths from coronary heart disease every year. A new World Health Organization brief explains. First of all, that's their bucket for this. Chewing, vaping, smokeless tobacco, you know, all those other things. They're just all together now. They're just all together in one thing. Even though there's like a continuum, you know, of risk saying that, well, maybe chewing tobacco is a little more harmful than snooze, but those are in the same category. Okay, well, maybe vaping is a little bit, you know, maybe at least 95% less harmful than combustible tobacco, but no, it's gonna go in the same bucket as as chewing tobacco and snooze, just all smokeless tobacco. Awesome. Well, you know, that's what you wanna see. You just wanna see generalized sort of categorizations like this. And the roughly, Roughly 200,000, roughly. Can I get any more specifics on that? Just roughly 200,000? Can I get any more specifics? Well, no. If you want any more specifics, you're gonna have to talk to someone who gives a shit. But if you follow the link from this tweet, it sends you to this website. And look, this website is, this brief, it, it, it is mostly talking about tobacco. It is mostly talking about tobacco, like combustible Combustible tobacco. Every year, 1.9 billion people die from tobacco-induced heart disease, according to a new brief released today by the World Health Organization, World Heart Federation, and the University of Newcastle, Australia, ahead of World Heart Day. Australia. Australia and America, we just seem to be going down the same path of just, let's protect combustible tobacco cigarette sales. Let's do that. In fact, next week on Tuesday Bro Tuesday, I would highly encourage everybody to come out. I'm going to have the brilliant Dr. Colin Mendelson on from Othra, from the Australian Tobacco Harm Reduction Association in Australia. Colin Mendelson will be here. We're going to be chatting about everything that's going down in Australia because it is ridiculous. So like I said, this whole World Health Organization article is basically talking about combustible tobacco cigarettes, you know, combustible tobacco cigarettes. And then they have one little, one little blurb in here about vaping. The brief also shows that smokeless tobacco is responsible for around 200,000 deaths from coronary heart disease per year. E-cigarettes also raise blood pressure, increasing the risk of cardiovascular disease. Unbelievable. So here's the part that really upsets me about this is I being, you know, whatever in the field that I'm in, trying to be the best, you know, uh, vaping harm reduction advocate that I possibly can be, of course I'm gonna do a deep dive into this and, and, and of course I'm gonna look into these claims, but the average person, on Twitter, who has no dog in this fight, who has never vaped, who has never smoked, who is wholly trusting of the once trusted World Health Organization, will just read this and take it for face value and regurgitate that to all of their friends going, you know, well, I read that the World Health Organization, you know, they said e-cigarettes raise blood pressure and that increases the risk of cardiovascular disease. That's what they're gonna remember. That's what they're going to, to take away from this. But 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 if that's true, which it's not true, then why do I have this study right here sitting in front of me from the Journal of the American College of Cardiology, 
with the cardiovascular effects of switching from tobacco cigarettes to electronic cigarettes. Why do I have this huge study in front of me where their results, where, where their results were uh, within one month of switching to, from tobacco cigarettes to electronic cigarettes, there was a significant improvement in endothelial function and vascular stiffness. Females benefited from switching more than males did in, uh, in every between group comparison. Those who complied best with electronic cigarette switch demonstrated the largest improvement. Why was their conclusion that tobacco cigarette smokers, particularly females, demonstrate significant improvement in vascular health within one month of switching from combustible tobacco to electronic cigarettes? Switching from tobacco cigarettes to electronic cigarettes may be considered a harm reduction measure. Why, why did the World Health Organization just miss this particular? Maybe they just missed it. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they just missed it. But also, what about this study uh, from uh, where was this? Yeah. Oh, the University of Dundee. A trial found that patients, 114 total, who switched from smoking to vaping experience a 1.5 percentage improvement with their blood vessel function as demonstrated across a four-week period? Or, or what about another <laughs> or what about another study from the Vanderbilt University? Where's this? From the Vanderbilt University Medical Center, this research shows that heavy cigarette smokers with at least a 20 pack a year smoking history can reduce their risk of cardiovascular disease by 39% within five years if they switch to e-cigarettes. That's three studies that I just found. <laughs> touting the positive effects of switching from combustible, deadly combustible tobacco cigarettes to far less harmful vapor products, but the World Health Organization still just, whatever, fucking Dr. Tedros, head in the sand, nope. Vaping causes 200,000 deaths a year and that's the World Health Organization's stance. And they're wrong. And, they, and they're wrong. And they lie. And they're wrong. And they lie and they lie, and they're wrong. Oh, is it just my chat that froze? Did everybody's chat, hang on, let me pop out my chat again, I apologize. I was going on a real, on a real rant there. I was going on, I was going on a real tear. She's going on a real, <laughs> she's going on a real tear there. The World Health Organization is just liars. They're just, they're, look, it's either lying or willful ignorance or, you know, they have to be aware of these studies, right? Three, there's three. I just showed them three studies that showed that you can improve your cardiovascular health by switching from cigarettes to vapor products. It's enough to make you insane. So what I'm going to do is I won't be linking to the, to the World Health Organization website, but in, down in the description, I will be linking to this study that was done in the Journal of the American College of Cardiology, showing the improvement. I'll also be linking to uh, this paper, this page that has the uh, that has the Vanderbilt University study on it, that has the uh, University of Dundee study on it, showing the 39% you know, increase in cardiovascular health over five years if they switch to e-cigarettes. So it's kind of unbelievable, uh, kind of unbelievable to me. In fact, uh, Vaping.org, the American Vaping Association, uh, they, they commented on this as well. They had another day, another embarrassment. World Health Organization, World Health Organization <laughs> cites retracted anti-vaping study. Yes, the, where they're getting their information from is our good buddy, our old friend, Mr. Glantz, Mr. Stanton Glantz, University of California, San Francisco, And his study that was retracted, retracted study where he somehow vapors had heart attacks before they started vaping. But then Stanton Glantz said, 
that was caused by vaping and then really like released that as a paper and all of these like the american heart association the american lung association the world health organization they're all relying on the retracted junk science discredited study study that stanton glantz did uh i mean what the hell yo like I said, I'll have links down in the description to all of the good stuff that I talked about, including the uh, including the uh, American Vaping Association. In fact, the American Vaping Association had this to say, considering the World Health Organization believes it is proper for countries to prohibit the sale of vaping products while leaving combustible cigarettes freely available, no one should be surprised by their willingness, willingness to use dodgy and outright fraudulent claims to mislead the public. Um, that's all they're doing. And the problem is if you go on Twitter or if you go on Facebook or you're talking to anybody, you're talking to your friends, you're talking to your family, and if you try to discredit or badmouth the World Health Organization, people just look at you like you're crazy because they've been, up until recently, like a pretty trusted organization. And people look to the World Health Organization People look to them and, and trust them. And when you start saying things like, well, you know, the World Health Organization is lying about vaping. They're lying about smokeless tobacco products. They're lying about this, that, and the other. When you tell people, it's just, you feel like a crazy person and people look at you like you're crazy. They say, where's your tinfoil hat, Alex Jones? And you go, no, no tinfoil hat needed. I can prove this. Send them here. Send them to this video with a timestamp. Send them... <laughs> Send them to this video with a timestamp, please. So, so buttons. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this news and advocacy segment up. There is one last thing that I wanted to touch on. In fact, who sent me this? I wanted to give her proper credit. A few people sent this over to me. Uh, most recently, uh, Victoria. Uh, hi, Nick. My name is Victoria. My friends call me Tori. I watch all three of your streams each week. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, this is my first time reaching out to you, but I thought you had to see this. I was scrolling through the newsfeed app on my phone like I normally do, the downtime hours of the vape shop I work at. Uh, small shout out to uh, Mad Vape slash Now Cure Vaporium. In North Carolina, absolutely will shout them out. When I came across one of the most disgusting articles I think I've ever seen, it's garbage news like this that should be pointing out to others. Uh, it's sure to incite some rage sweat. I know it did with me. And yeah, it is... Uh... Oh, it's, it's rage sweat. The big headline. We probably all have already seen this. Have we all already seen this? <laughs> I feel like everybody's been sharing this all over the place. Big headline on this. This comes from a website called Science Alert, by the way. Science Alert. E-cig clouds aren't vapor, scientists warn. That word just makes them sound safer. This is what they're left with. This, this, is, this, is, this is what we call the bottom of the barrel. You know, well, we couldn't attack it on the health concerns because the science is showing that they're not actually that bad for you. Well, let's go after nicotine. Uh, uh, it turns out that we've been studying nicotine for a, uh, for a really, really long time, and we, we know it's not really that bad for people. What else? The verbiage? Should, should it just be like a nomenclature thing? Can we do that? That's essentially all this is, and I wish I had time to sit here and read you this entire article. Emissions from e-cigarettes are not harmless. Basic, they basically are. The direct vapor from an RTA is essentially harmless. Secondhand vapor, not a thing. No evidence to show that. No evidence to show that. Emissions from e-cigarettes are not harmless and calling them vapor is purposefully misleading, scientists argue. No scientist, oh, oh, Victoria's here in the chat. Fuck yeah, Victoria. Thank you for being here. Thank you for this article. Scientists argue. No scientists are arguing about this. Guarantee you that no scientists are arguing about this. While the puffs from e-cigs aren't exactly smoke, 
the term vapor often brings to mind an innocuous cloud of water. As such, public health experts, no public health experts, argue that aerosol is a more accurate description as e-cigarette clouds have been shown to contain harmful chemicals that may hang in the air and settle on nearby surfaces. False, demonstrably false. The FDA sent their own team to a vape shop and spent two full days at the vape shop measuring levels in the air, levels on surfaces, and found, guess what? Fucking zero, nothing. There's no evidence to show that. This is just hogwash. This is just, I mean, this really just feels like a lot of propaganda. And really what this comes down to is Michelle Mitten wrote a great paper uh, that I'm going to turn into a podcast, hopefully very soon, called How the U.S. Spreads Fake Vaping Fears. And one of the points that she makes in this paper is they use the scariest sounding language. They have to be sure to use the scariest sounding language. So comparing three terms for e-cig emissions, they polled college students, about 800 college students, and researchers found that the word vapor, the college students thought it was linked to a lower sense of risk. You know, vapor sounds less risky. On the other hand, students who were asked questions about using the word chemicals or aerosol were more likely to describe that as harmful or very harmful. They all they want to do is use the scariest sounding language. And here's the thing, fucking go ahead, I don't care. Call it whatever you want, it is still and not, and will never be smoke. It will never be smoke. One thing that upsets me about this, and, and here's where I'm gonna leave this, um, uh, let's see, can I do, how do I show you this Chrome? Let's see if this will work. Ha ha! Researchers say, because while normal cigarette smoke may contain more toxicants, recent evidence suggests e-cigarette clouds can still expose bystanders, so secondhand, to nicotine, heavy metals, ultrafine particulates, and volatile organic compounds. And these are all, these are linked. And what happens when you click on these links is it takes you to this CDC study. Exposure to secondhand smoke and secondhand e-cigarette aerosol among middle and high school students. They're making the claim in this article that this evidence suggests that secondhand vapor can expose bystanders to nicotine, which it can't, heavy metals, which firsthand vapor doesn't even do that, ultrafine particulates, definitely not, and volatile organic compounds. This is their evidence, and this study from the CDC doesn't even say that. <laughs> this study has nothing to do with particulates, secondhand nicotine vapor, volatile organic compounds, heavy metals, particulates, nothing. This study that they linked to, citing this as their evidence, is literally just a breakdown of the 2018 National Youth Tobacco Survey where they did sort of another study within it seeing how many people, how many numbers of people were exposed to secondhand vapor. That's it. Mentions nothing else. I sat here all day and read the whole damn thing. Okay, maybe not the whole damn thing. It doesn't mention it just mentions frequency of exposure. It has nothing to do with ultrafine particles or heavy metals or nicotine or VOCs or anything like that. They're citing things to make their point that don't make their point. And that is, that's infuriating. Of course, they mention the epidemic. Of course, they mention other nomenclature. Of course, there's a big picture of a dead shark at the bottom of this. It's all about perception. They want to use the scariest sounding words, you guys, the scariest sounding words. Well, nicotine doesn't sound scary enough. So what if we called it, I don't know, junky juice? Yeah. Ooh, junky chemical. Ooh, make it, <laughs> make it sound as scary as possible. Exactly. Dihydrogen monoxide. 
Dihydrogen monoxide, it's in everything you drink. It's in everything you eat. Uh, too much of it can kill you. It causes uh, excessive sweating. It causes excessive urination. Uh, it causes diarrhea. It causes vomiting. Dihydrogen monoxide. Same thing. It's just a war of words, and they're trying to use the scariest sounding data, the scariest sounding numbers, and it just, it's rage inducing, isn't it? It's just, <laughs> it's just rage inducing. So I think that's going to wrap up this, uh, this rage, sweat, truth, butter edition of uh, news and advocacy. I'll have links all down in the description to where you can read all about this stuff. I'll even link to the uh, e-cig clouds aren't vapor, but be ready to just rage sweat your face off. You will rage sweat. As Victoria pointed out, sweat. You, <laughs> you'll just fucking rage sweat. It's ridiculous. It's infuriating. So let's move on a little bit from there. Let's do, uh, I saw a couple more super chats in, so let's do some super chats. That's it. That's all you get. Just a little bit of the bumper. It's no big deal. It's whatever. Uh, where did I leave off? Light bearer. Real question is when are we going to see a review of the sup box? Light bearer. I don't even know what the sup box is. I apologize. I'm out of the loop. I spent all day reading CDC studies. I don't know what the sup box is. I'm not hip to the sup box, but I'll check it out. And if light bearer wants a review, then damn it. I'll do a review. Southern Comfort, loving my college, uh, black with the Ether 22. Yeah, it's a good, it's really good for mouth to lungs. Like the Ether, like this Pioneer, it's just a banger on here. Just a banger. Mm. I'm glad you like it, Southern Comfort. Appreciate that, man. Benjamin, uh, Ben is short for Benjamin. Could be a pseudonym. Hmm. Bend over. No way. Your name is not Ben Dover. Is your real name Ben Dover? Because if so, then fucking awesome. Bump that fist, bro. Not the real Gerard Butler. The other guy is Overdrip and the water guy is Will, Will Steel Valley Vapors. Oh yeah, Will from Steel Valley Vapors and Overdrip and the Angry Hippie and Frames Janklin. In fact, where's Kent? I need to hydrate. Where's my Kent Hydro? Let's hydrate with Kent. Oh, I love water. I'm glad that I love water so much. It makes it easier to stay hydrated. Hydro homies. You need that as a clip. Yeah. Thanks, Kent. Thanks for hydrating with us, Hydro homies. Uh, appreciate that. Uh, not the real Gerard Butler. And then when we got one from Steel Valley Vapors, that was me. Stay hydrated, Hydro homies. Punk, uh, PRSF 2020. I know what that means. Punk Rock Silver Fox. You're the Punk Rock Silver Fox. <laughs> thanks for being here. Thanks for being here. Will from Steel Valley Vapors. Another one from not hat fan. Na, 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 na. I do need hat fan right now. I'm hot. I need hat. And this nicotine shirt does not breathe. It's like the thickest cotton t-shirt I've ever worn in my life. It's just, it feels like I'm wearing a jacket. Feels like I'm wearing a jacket. Southern comfort. Shout out Doug. That's what we always do every week. Every week we shout out Doug. Stellar vapor in Lutz. Florida. You got another one? Shout out you two fighting the good fight. I, you know what, man? I'm trying my best, Southern Comfort. Damn it. I'm trying my best. I appreciate that. Uh, Lorraine. Lorraine. Very great. Have you sang a birthday song yet? Well, it's my birthday today. Can I have a song, please? What? Two birthday songs in the same vlog? I don't think so, Lorraine. Of course, I'm joking. Happy birthday to Lorraine. Happy birthday to Lorraine. Happy birthday, dear Lorraine. Cheers. Happy birthday to you. Yeah. Happy birthday, Lorraine. A new 10% beer was a good idea. Uh, 
So, honestly, happy birthday, Lorraine. I appreciate you spending your birthday here on the Grim Green YouTube channel at the vlog. That's crazy to me that that's crazy to me that you would do it. That's like that episode of Seinfeld where Jerry Seinfeld goes on a date with that girl first date and it's her birthday and he's really like thrown off by that. Anyway, <laughs> Big Lou, holy shit, how have you been? Uh, Nick, it's been a while. Hope life is treating you well. New York flavor ban and vape mail ban sucks here. Hope to meet you at a convention again in the future. Look, I would love, I'm looking forward to the day that we have another vape convention in the United States. Looking forward to that day. Might be a few years off, but let, let's say you and me, Big Lou, we meet up again in like 2023. I think that's when, maybe well, there'll be an ECC 2023 <laughs> again. Appreciate you being here, Big Lou. That's awesome of you. Jay Dewey, uh, Grim Poops Naked. That's what I, you heard wrong. You did not hear that. You you might've heard that, but it's wrong. It's a, it's a bold face lie. It's a bold face lie from this guy. I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky any time of year. Dun, 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 dun. I believe I can fly. That literally never gets old. It was gone for a while. You know, I wanted to keep it fresh, but, uh, Shout out to my homeboy, my brother, Dwayne, homeboy OC, with the, in, in there with the Yawk song. That's probably who you heard it from. Ranger Man, that's very gracious of you. Search YouTube. I'm, I'm pretty sure there's a video where someone started a fake petition to ban to hydrogen monoxide, uh, and it got a lot of signatures. Yeah, that's actually from uh, one of my heroes, my, one of my biggest heroes on earth, Penn Gillette, of the comedy magic team Penn and Teller. They had a TV show on Showtime a number of years ago, good fucking God, 10 years ago, maybe even longer than that, 12, 13 years ago, called Bullshit. And uh, they, they, they did that. They had a whole environmentalism episode and uh, this lady went around a big uh, like outdoor gathering and got like thousands of signatures for people to ban, people wanted to ban dihydrogen monoxide. Just from hearing a little pitch, they signed, signed it away. Like, yep, yeah, ban it, yep, yeah, ban it. Water. It's water, Ranger Man, water. Uh, Tis but a pseudonym, Benjamin Dover. Okay, well, in that case, you get some comedy points for being Benjamin Dover. <laughs> Benjamin Dover. <sighs> Dickie Moe, look, now I don't know whose name is real. Is Southern Comfort's name really Southern Comfort? I, for some reason, that one sticks out to me like that might not be his real name. Dickie Moe, very gracious of you. Finally got this to work. Keep up the great work you do for the... Re oh, Dickie Moe, thank you very much, man. That's why I'm here. That's why I do what I do. Southern Comfort, very gracious of you. Uh, it's Junky Juice. That's what Ashley Moody thinks. Yeah, Ashley Moody can fornicate herself with a gluten-free dildo. Apparently, we're all addicted to fentanyl because it's a gateway drug. What a joke. Yeah, look, the gateway drug thing didn't pan out for marijuana. Nope, not a gateway drug. Also, vaping, not a gateway. There, gateways, that's not a thing. Scott Runyon, very gracious of you. I just really can't stand Ashley Moody. Should I play that video of her again? Man, I can't stand that chick. Uh, Scott Runyon, very gracious of you. Hat fan would be best sung to the tune of bread fan. Bread a fan? Bread fan? I'm too old to know what bread fan is apparently. What's bread fan, Scott Runyon? I don't know what bread fan is. I, ju I, ju I have no idea what bread fan is. No idea what bread fan is. Sorry. Sorry, so uh, I think what we are gonna do right now is... Uh... Oh. What's in the box? What's in the box? So, I have a box. I did that video, 11 Years of Stuff. If you haven't watched it yet, check it out. It turned out pretty rad. Uh, there was a lot of requests for, they just want to see what's in the boxes. So I decided that this is what retro vaping is basically going to become. We're going to go through some fucking boxes. And I picked the smallest box today. This still weighs, I don't know, a few pounds, 
probably six pounds worth of toppers in here. And it just, on the side, it just says retro toppers. Can you see that? Retro toppers. These used to have e-liquid in it. Retro toppers. These are some retro toppers from over the years that when the tackle boxes get too full, things have to go into this, into boxes in my closet. So we're gonna be going through them. And there's some really interesting stuff. I kind of just, like, I didn't go through this through this when I got it out. I just kind of skimmed over the top and went, oh, okay, well, what's going on over there? Last week in the retro vaping, wait, 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 wait is this the Irishman? Grim Green doesn't know bread fan. That it. That is, I'm absolutely disgusted. You're disgusted, I'm sorry. Bread Fan is an old song that Metallica covers, i.e. Garage Days. Bread Fan? Wow, that rings so many little no bells to me. That rings zero bells to me, Scott. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I guess I'm not a real Metallica fan. Are you gonna gatekeep Metallica? Really? <laughs> Last week in the retro vaping, we had that uh, we had that nectar. Well, I found the full RDTA of the nectar. Yeah, the full nectar RDTA is in here. Completely forgot I had that. So that's in the box, and this box is full, full, full of stuff. What else is in here? Something from Cloud Chasers Inc. I don't know how old this is. The Cent this is a big 30 millimeter guy. Centurion V2. Anybody have this? The Centurion V2. Good Lord. This is a gigantic atomizer. Now, the whole point of this is I'm looking for something that I can maybe just wick up real quick. Wick up real quick. Maybe the Centurion V2 is going to be in there. Oh, this has coils in it. Oh, fucked up coils in it. I could straighten those out. I could straighten those coils out pretty quick, though. It's got some fucked up coils in it. Oh, good lord. How big are these coils? Four millimeters? Yeah, basically. It's got some coils in it. Centurion V2. Uh, resample. Yes. Oh, they're glowing pretty quick. All right. Well, maybe the Centurion V2 is on the table. I never had a Centurion. I mean, I never, I didn't want to say I never had a Centurion V2. Never had a Centurion V1. But I got a Centurion V2 here. What the crap is this? I have no clue. Uh, Vicious Ant. Some sort of squonker from Vicious Ant. I had no idea that I had a vicious ant squonker. Anybody recognize this? Here, let me put it on a device. Don't know what the crap that thing is called, but that is a vicious ant squonker. RTA, RSA. <laughs> Big uh, velocity style deck on there, which is a weird choice for a squonker. And it's a weird choice to have an RSA like a squonking atomizer with Kennedy style airflow. That doesn't make much sense to me. Whatever happened to the gigantic leaning tree box mod? I miss it. I miss it too. It's in one of the boxes. It's in one of the boxes. In fact, as we work our way down the boxes, we're eventually gonna get to the tackle box where all of my gear from like 09 sits. Well, shit. Vicious Ant Squonker with a Velocity Style deck and Kennedy Style Airflow. Oh, the Vox, V-A-U-X, or the Vo, the Vo or the Vox? I'm not really sure. Uh, oh yeah, wow, the Star Tank. This was a sub-ohm tank. This is a sub-ohm tank from back in the day when all sub-ohm tanks, like here, like this one too, I saw the crown. The Crown V1 in here as well. All sub ohm tanks were really, really tall. And now all we have is tanks that are like super hyper squatty. Every RTA and every sub ohm tank is just a hyper squatty little tank. All right, well, Centurion V2, that could be a thing. What the hell are you? Sub ohm innovations? 
I don't recognize this at all. Does anybody recognize this? Sub ohm innovations, uh, something. I remember I used to really like the sub ohm innovations sub zero. I think it was called the sub zero RDA. I don't know what this one is. Looks to be a wider millimeter with just a honkin' honkin' two-post deck. That is a gigantic two-post deck in there. Gigantic two-post deck and huge, like, enormous airflow. All right. All right, sub-ohm innovation. See, this is great. Now I can actually pick things out and use them for retrovaping. Kanger tank. Is that a Kanger? What is that, a Kanger sub-tank? That's not the pro tank. The pro tank looked different than that. Sub zero. Is that what that was? The sub zero? Oh shit. Stan. I know Stan's not here tonight, but I have a lucid. <laughs> I have a lucid RDA. I couldn't stand this thing. And in fact, I felt bad for Stan having to deal with me because he asked me to review this and this is before I, I didn't know who Stan was. He wasn't on my radar. And I just kept telling him, I fucking hate this RDA. It's so it's so ridiculously wonky. And so, you know, like this was the RDA where you could change the clamps out. So you could have two clamps on the bottom and have it be like a two post banger. You could have two clamps on the top or you could have two offset clamps and do two vertical coils. Or you could have two vertical coils, you know, offset clamps on the other way. Damn it, why didn't I attach my, uh, here, we're just gonna have to look at my mouth because this is gonna be a lot of show and tell. That's the Lucid RDA, and the Lucid RDA had this weird wonky ass airflow that was just weird and wonky ass. Stabilized piss drip tip, 100% Scott Jenkins, 800% Scott Jenkins. Let's see, what else are we gonna put on here? What else do I have in this box? That's a Crown two. Ooh, what's this? Oh, that's a hash tour. Uh, that's more. Squape. I have a green squape guy. Anybody hip to squape stuff? The, the, the most complicated RTAs on earth? Good Lord. Uh, this dates back, I think, to 2016. This little squape guy. I think I remember reviewing him in 2016. Never enjoyed the squape stuff. Eventually, when I got it set up, it was pretty enjoyable, but... It was not very enjoyable, man. Holy shit, look at this. This is an old school sub tank. This is the Silo. The Silo. I think this is from 2015 if I'm not mistaken. Pull those coils out to like a 45 degree angle and the Lucid will rock. I cannot believe you, Michelle Lynn. The Lucid will never be good. If you like the Lucid, that's fine. It's just a bad atomizer. It's just a bad atomizer. Silo from Beyond Vape. This was a sub tank. Uh, oh, I got a V God RDTA. When everybody was doing RDTAs, there's a V God RDTA. Surprisingly, V God not submitting any PMTAs at all, which is weird. V God RDTA. Oh gosh. Wow, this is a really tarnished beyond hell, but this is a really old, old, old Death Wish mods unholy. The airflow is upside down crosses. You know, this is why the non-vapers have the opinion that they do of us. <laughs> you fucking serious, Michelle? Yeah, the airflow. The airflow is upside down crosses. In fact, if you remember correctly, holy crap. If you remember correctly, this was the RDA that at a vape meet I vaped a tampon out of. Yeah, this was it. This was the tampon RDA, the unholy from Death Wish mods, the original unholy with the big upside down cross airflow. This was the tampon RDA. Yeah, no regrets. Manko, oh, holy shit. This is an old school RTA. I don't remember the name of it, but it was by this Greek dude named Leo. And by Leo, Leo passed away a few years ago. Leo passed away a few years ago, but he made some great little RTAs. 
And this was his like a uh, really restricted lung RTA. Man, I wish I could remember the name of this. Wish I could remember the name of this. Damn it. It wasn't even engraved on the bottom. Anyway, I'm going to set that one aside. Uh, what's this one? The battle cap. What do I have? The battle deck and the battle cap. Who is who had a battle motif? Uh, who said battle deck and battle cap? This was the battle battle deck, and this was the battle cap. And it looks it's like hastily engraved on there. One giant huge O ring on there. I'll never get that drip tip down there. I don't remember who this was. I remember that these were expensive as fuck, though. I remember the deck was uh, silver or the posts were silver or something was silver on this. I remember these being expensive. The battle deck. Shit. Well, I'll have to throw a build on that at some point. Um, let's see what else treasures are in here. I think this is an Addy Tooney special right here. That's an Addy Tooney K Fun modified K Fun right there. I guarantee you, it's heat treated. Was that a Comp Life New Wave Dave? Mech Life AV Life? That was an Avid Life. Holy shit! Let's go back to the Avid Life thing. Sorry, Addy Tooney. No offense intended. Yeah. Battle Cap. Just tons of whistly airflow. Battle Cap and Battle Deck. No, I didn't even know that I had any Avid Life stuff. Didn't even know it. What else is in here? Oh, look at this. This is an R this is a QP Designs Kali V1, baby. Kali V1. I remember using this and vaping uh Poet Sweet Black Tea out of it. This was my Poet Sweet Black Tea vape. Oh, it's even got a build in it. Maybe let's wick this up. You wanna wick this up? Should we? Should we wick it? Should we wick this up? Yo, it's gonna glow. If this glows evenly, I'm wicking it up. Oh, it's glowing evenly. All right. We might have a retro vape here of the Kali V1 RDA. Kali V1. I like QP designs. I like me some QP design stuff. Uh-oh. Here's here I call this the drama RDA. Was anybody around for my drop RDA review? <laughs> People went bananas. 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 Uh, I didn't really like this RDA, man. And it wasn't anything personal against Brian. In fact, me and Brian and I talked about it later. Uh, I just wasn't a huge fan. I thought that's a weird design. And your coils are really, really fucking high. Uh, and you can't really lower them and you can't tuck them in between. Like what's the fucking, what's the point of this? I don't get it. And why would you use this as a squonker? Like it's the drop. There was a lot of drama around this. All the comments went bananas on that YouTube video. Like nothing I had ever expected. In fact, oh, here's, here's a blast from the past. Here's a sucky butts RDA. This is the goon LP. What a crap RDA this was. This was just a, Adam, you didn't like the drop either? Yeah, I didn't like the drop. Just didn't like it. Look, it's fine. Lots of shouting and crashing noises. Yeah, it was, uh, it was crazy what the drop fanboys did on that YouTube video. And then it's funny because Brian, you know, he's such a good guy and we've known each other for a while. He hits me up on the side on Facebook and he's like, hey, you know, I'm sorry about that. I didn't mean to, you know, I don't, I don't, I can't vouch for what they're doing and I told them not to do it. And they just, you know, I'm sorry about that. And I'm like, yeah, it's, it's whatever. Look, I get it. People are loyal to their favorite things, but you don't have to be a complete asshole if someone doesn't like your favorite thing. Oh my God. The dude RDA. This was a hunk of butt stuff. Terrible RDA. Terrible. I like the vape that I got from it. You want that goon low pro, not the real Gerard Butler? Sold. Sold. You can have this goon low pro. That is a cruddy and a half atomizer. Uh, I can't get rid of the dude RDA. Uh, I did a review for it. It's not great. 
it's a bitch and a half to try to install coils on this. Like a bitch and a half. It's actually two full bitches to install coils on this. But it had this weird collet design where you had to like put these put these collets on here and it was like a chuck of a drill. Like you tighten them down and it would close the teeth in and you had to position your coils in there and use this big wrench. I wanted this to succeed so much and Squidude was so excited about it. And I don't know where Squidude ended up. I don't know what he's doing these days. I I ordered a thousand of these for the, uh, was it a thousand? It couldn't have been a thousand. I ordered like, a few hundred of these for the Namberjuice website. In fact, when the Namberjuice website closed, I think we still had Squidood RDAs in stock because no one would buy them. Um, what a terrible RDA. Sorry. Sorry, Squidood, wherever you are, that RDA was not, uh, not good. Who remembers this thing from Asmodus? Isn't that the weirdest little atomizer you've ever seen in your life? There's a review for this somewhere on my YouTube. Oh, it's still got coils in it. Dang, this is definitely going to be a future retro vaping. Dolphinately going to be a future retro vaping. I remember it not vaping too bad. Not too bad. Oh, who is asking about uh, Apocalypse? Is this an Apocalypse RDA? I think this is one. I got this one. I got a 26 millimeter one too. That's an Apocalypse, right? Armageddon Manufacturing? I think that is. Yeah, the Gala, the, the Galatech, Gal, Galatech, the Galatech, the Galatech, yeah, Asmodus Galatech. <laughs> I think this is an Armageddon guy. I think that's an Armageddon guy. Armageddon Manufacturing. That, now there's, now, see, now we're getting into like real, real old throwbacky stuff. Like, I think I've done this for retro vaping. The Atomic. I loved the crap out of this Atomic RDA. Loved the crap out of it. That's right, still whistles. Okay, just want to make sure that it still whistled. The Atomic, Atomic RDA. Uh, we haven't even got through like half of what's in here. The Cito RDA, look at this. Very tarnished, full brass with heat sink fins, Aeolus. Yeah, that's uh, circa 2000, 2015 right there. Some other RTA, some TVL RTA that's, or RDA, full brass RDAs in here as well. Look at that thing. TVL, 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 TVL. Just keep spinning. Never stop spinning. That is weird. Oh yeah, look at that fucking deck. Like what the hell are you supposed to do with that? What the crap? Okay, that's, what is that? What is that? Why does that just pull off like that? Who knows what this is? I bet it was meant to hybrid to something, right? Look at that deck. What are you supposed to even do on there? It's like the 454 big block. Yeah, not the real Gerard Butler. That Tobe RDA, I think, uh, I don't even know, bro. I don't even know. I couldn't even tell you where the Tobe RDA is right now. I'm sure it exists somewhere. I'm sure it exists. Uh, anybody remember Cloud, Sicker, Cloud Kicker Society? Cloud Kicker Society did the K's RDA. This is a solid 2016 banger. It had uh, airflow that was shaped like wind currents. I don't know. You know, we were trying everything back then. Some things stuck, some things didn't. Oh, holy shit. Churchill, the Churchill RTA. Does anybody remember this thing? This thing rules. What? A Oh yeah, this is a great RTA. This is a spectacular RTA. All right, so look, we gotta pick something here to vape. Let me show you uh, the Geek Vape Radar. <laughs> Anybody remember the Geek Vape Radar RDA? It had that weird deck, 
that had like offset posts. It was actually a pretty slick little deck to build on. Geek Vape Radar. Here's another Cloud Kicker Society cap that I don't have the base for. But I remember really enjoying that. Uh, there's an original Twisted Messes RDA in here. It's an original Twisted Messes, Golden Black Twisted Messes RDA. What was this? The Conqueror. The Watofo Conqueror. Holy shit. Watofo Conqueror RTA. See, I'm going to have to keep some of these out. I'm going to have to keep some of these out. Ashley says, the, con the uh, was that your dream RTA? Really? The Churchill? Uh, it's, a, it's a spectacular RTA. The Churchill's awesome. The Churchill, really great. Really great RTA. Really great RTA. In fact, I'm tempted to build that up instead of the Cloud... Cloud Kicker Society or the this one. No, let's do this one. Let's just wick up this 30 millimeter monster. I could probably wick this up pretty quickly, I feel. Right? It's already built. I just have to wick it real quick. It's probably going to vape just as well as anything I have on my desk currently. And it's a giant 30 millimeter atomizers. They all, <laughs> Scott Jenkins, they all need to be built right now. Look, if I could make this like a three and a half hour vlog, sure. I mean, that, that could be an option, but as it stands uh, here, I don't think there's anything else in here that's of note. I have a, I have a Hadley that I didn't know that I had, so I'm definitely going to keep this one out, or at least on top. Keep the Churchill on top. Let's keep this on top. Let's keep this on top. Here, see, i got to put these uh, Goon LP, the QP Designs, yeah, the Kali OG. Or should we do the Kali? You guys vote. Cloud Kicker, Cloud Chasers Inc. Big 30 millimeter Centurion V2 or the Kali V1. What should I wick up and vape right now? As the retro vape. And not the real Gerard Butler. You get the cruddiest atomizer of all time. You get the Goon LP. I hope you like terrible atomizers. Hope you like terrible, juicy, leaky atomizers. <laughs> uh, CCI, CCI, 30 millimeter, CCI, CCI. Oh, there's only one vote for the Kali. It looks like we're going with the Centurion. 30 millimeter, okay. 30 millimeter, let's do it real quick. Let's do it as fast as I can. In fact, real quickly, I appreciate that, Michelle Lynn. So that was... Mostly, most of the contents of one box of toppers. These are the toppers that can't hang out inside the... I go WL, Sam. <laughs> Do the I go WL. Do the I go W. In fact, uh, here, let me do this real quickly. Uh, I I'm going to wick this up. I'm going to wick this up and I'm going to vape this. But we're going to... Ah, shit, how am I going to do this? Th this was the retro vaping. I have a lot of boxes to go through, and eventually we're going to get down to that tackle box, baby. But I want to wick this up right now, but I don't want a lot of dead air. So what I'm going to do right now is, shit, we're going to really, this will all make sense in one second. Getting to know Grim Green. So we're not going to add any uh, tracks to the Getting to Know Grim Green Spotify playlist today. I don't have a record picked out, but what I do have is a YouTube video for you guys that we're all just going to sit and rock out and watch together. When I, talk about, uh, when I talk about my main man, when I talk about my buddy Mark Moots, who introduced my world to a whole other just, I mean, musical craziness, you know? Just a whole world of music that I had never heard of before, never used, never, you know, bands like Clutch and Fu Manchu and Slowburn and Caius and all of these great stoner rock bands and like Place of the Skull and The Obsessed and Mastodon and all of these really great bands that I was never hip to. A lot of those, the majority of those came from Mark Moots. And I mentioned Mark Moots a lot. In fact, we've featured Mark Moots's newest band, Weight of the Tide, on this here vlog. But 
Weight of the Tide started as just an idea in Mr. Moots's head. And he asked me to join his band and we were called the Swamp Donkey. Yeah, we were called the Swamp Donkey. We, we hung out in Davy, the drummer's garage. We, we smoked cigarettes. We drank Captain Morgan and we wrote stoner riffs. And that's what we did. <laughs> and I loved it. It was a great time. And uh, Mark Moots has obviously since gone on to do a lot of uh, much cooler things with uh, Way to the Tide and the such as. But for a few years there, we were, we were the swamp donkey, you know, and we loved it. We were, like I said, heavily inspired by a lot of bands like Caius, you know, like not necessarily Fu Manchu, but like a lot of those stonery, sludgy bands. We had a heavy, like high on fire influence, but we tried to kind of walk that like heavy stoner rock sort of musical genre and Reno Nevada was not ready for us at that time. I don't think, I don't know if Reno Nevada ever is going to be real big on stoner rock, but what I'm about to play you is one of our songs. It's a recording. It's a live show from good God. What is the date on this? I have no idea what the date is on this. I'm going to say 2000. Thousand and six, two thousand seven, two thousand eight. I'm going to say two thousand eight. I'm going to say this show is from two thousand eight. This is us playing at a venue called the Warehouse, which was in Carson City, Nevada, and this is. Let's just experience this all together while we're watching this quick music video uh, for getting to know Grim Green. I'm going to wick this up and then we'll come back and vape it. But this is what was a huge part of my life for a very long time. I mean, and we were all really, we were all really tight. We were all really good friends, you know, and then it came to a point when the band kind of started crumbling as, as a lot of bands do. And it was a weird transitional phase, you know, and it started with our drummer, Davey, who I love and I miss this guy like crazy. He's not dead. He's still alive. I just haven't talked to him in probably a decade. But Davey was kind of, you know, I'm not, I, I think I'm going to have to, you know, retire. I, I don't know if I can play with you guys anymore. And, oh, you know, okay, that, you know, that's, that's rough and, and that's rough. And then I, and then I ended up leaving after we got a new drummer, Julian. I had left after that. And so they replaced me. And then eventually Rich left and they replaced him. And then they went on to become, and then I think Julian left and, and they got Tommy back on drums. And then they became Way to the Tide, you know? And I loved it. I loved playing live music. I miss playing live music. In fact, I decided recently that instead of trying to get save money and get VR because I really want like an Oculus Go V2. Instead of getting VR, I'm going to buy a guitar because I want to play music again. Even if it's just in my own office, I'm going to get a little orange cabinet. I'm going to play some stoner riffs. And I think I'll find that much more satisfying as much as I want to play VR. I'm just not going to do it. I'm going to go back to my roots and play some music. So please enjoy this song from the Swamp Donkey. I am the the chubbier guy over to the left-hand side of the screen. That's stage right, but your left-hand side of the screen. I'm wearing a camouflage hat. I do a little vocals. We got I got some good rock out parts. Stick with it. It's good shit. But without any further ado, uh, here's the Swamp Donkey, ladies and gentlemen. You can walk 10,000 miles And everything starts to look the same You can watch the stars all fall down And I remember one of the names Promise that you hold But it'll never shift the flame 
Everything starts to look the same. You can watch the stars all burn. Oh, remember Thank you very much. We're the Swamp Donkey. <laughs> yes. Uh, I sang along that whole time. I sang along that whole time. And as far as I know, that is the only instance of that song existing on the internet. It's not on any streaming. If I have a CD, I don't know. I can try to rip the MP3 tracks or something to get them on the internet. I don't know where they're available. So much fun. Uh, Mark's such a great guy. It's, you know, we wrote these big, long stoner rock songs. In fact, there was, a, there was another band in Reno. I can't remember the name of them. Obscured or something. And they would always give us shit because <laughs> there was one, we were playing one show and we, we asked for any requests. We're like, hey, any requests? And someone said, yeah, write a song that's less than six minutes. Yeah, we wrote long songs. We just, we liked uh, we liked our riffs and we liked coming back to them. Um, what's the name of that song? Don't even remember the name of that fucking song. Safe to Say? I think it's called Safe to Say. I think it's called Safe to Say. But that's what we did. A lot of our stuff was that style, that genre, that, you know. And to this day, I, I love Stoner Rock. In fact, I found a new YouTuber recently that I've been watching like crazy. And if you if you go if you go over to his YouTube, it's he's called uh, he calls his YouTube Does It Doom, <sighs> and he he plays guitar and he you know he's like oh here's how we play this crowbar song. 
you know, here's how you play this electric wizard song. And, you know, he reviews guitar pedals and it's all based around like doom and stoner rock. And I love this guy. He doesn't have a whole ton of subscribers, but I just subscribed to him. You should go check him out. If you go subscribe to him, leave a comment, say Grim Green sent you. Cause I'm trying to, I don't know. I feel like it'd be fun to collaborate with this guy. I don't know what we could do. I just really like this new YouTuber. But that's what we did, man. We played uh, loud rock music. So before we get to our very last segment, which is going to be the liquid tasting, let's vape this CCI son of a bitch. Centurion V2. These are three and a half millimeter coils in here. Uh, I wicked them up with some cotton bacon and I threw some... Uh, uh, I've been craving this. Borgio. I threw some Borgio on top of there and uh, uh, it's mung bean. I know. It's like a milky mung bean. I'm excited about it. I'm going to leave this airflow full on open because this is a 0.35 and I'm running it at 90 watts, which has given me... It's series. This is a series build. It's going to be hot. So I have maximum airflow. There is no resistance. There is no resistance to this airflow. It's just like just like breathing in air through nothing. Let's give it a shot. Pure cloud chasing. Pure cloud chasing. Now let's turn the airflow down. You can turn off each slot individually. Each slot, there'll be so many slots. Each slot individually. Nope, we're gonna need more than one slot closed. Let's go to two slots open, two slots closed. That is a really, really nice resistance. Yeah, it's just really hot, really airy, really cloud chasey. Let's do two and a half slots open. This has one of those gigantic wideboard drip tips. Like it's smaller. The drip tip on this is smaller than the one on this unholy V3. Smaller drip tip. That is shocking to me. Maximum mung bean. In fact, this could have more wattage. How high can I go? Should I do 0.33 at 100 watts? Let's try it. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, you can do a 0.33 at 100 watts. That's fine. It's just, it's not even that hot, honestly. Let's turn it up even more. 110 watts. 0.33 at 110 watts. If all you want to do is cloud chase, this is the uh, this is the RDA for you. Huge, thick, dense, dense. 140 watts? Is that a challenge, Crimson? Fucking, I'll do it. I won't do that. Let's go to 120 watts, okay? Can we compromise there? Let's try 120 watts. Let me, uh, let me juice this up a little bit before we hit at 120 watts. Let's give it a shot. I'll even do it old school, cloud comp style, baby. Sitting down even. Yeah. Holy shit. They call themselves Cloud Chasers Inc. for a reason, I believe. Crazy. This is great. I am getting, I don't know if you can hear the crackle that's happening from these, Kent. You want me to vape like Kent? <laughs> I can't even do it. <laughs> I can't even do it. Well, there you go. We close some ch close some shades, chase some clouds with Cloud Chasers Inc. And now, let me do a couple of these super chats. Uh, I didn't think we were gonna run long, but I guess that's what's gonna happen. Let's do a couple super chats here. That's all you get. We don't have time. No time. Uh, that's right, Tracy Kennedy. Have you read the chemicals in hairspray? Yeah. 
oh, I've read the chemicals in aerosol hairspray. But then again, we're not inhaling that. Uh, Michelle Lynn, Harry, po- Harry Potter water bottle. Harry Potter water bottle. Oh, Suburban Dirt Farmer says Penn and Teller's BS is on Hulu and everyone needs to go watch it. Punk Rock Silver Fox 2020 uh, hat fan. Yeah, fuck yeah, Penn and Teller's bullshit is on Hulu. That's fantastic. I love that that's on Hulu. Everybody should go watch that. SVK Vapes, shout out to my favorite Philly girl, Michelle Lynn, Dull Dime, and everyone in the chat. Fist bump, hat fan, PRSF 2020. Fuck yeah, SVK Vapes. Can I be Punk Rock Silver Fox? I'm basically, I have basically silver hair. It's just, uh, it's just lacking on top. Southern Comfort, Swamp Donkey has kind of a down vibe. Yeah, we were uh, heavily, heavily influenced by the likes of Down and Crowbar and Kirk Weinstein. Mark always described us as Crowbar playing Kiss covers. Like that was, that was the, we were going for. We were going for like Crowbar heavy, but like upbeat, rocky, like Kiss songs. It was really fun. And I'm not a great bass player. And so it was mostly like when we tried to cover Kiss songs, I couldn't. We tried to cover, we did one show. And I think I've told this story, but we did one show. Correction, you're no Phil Anselmo. Yeah, I am not. That was my first attempt that you saw on video of singing clean vocals. I did it a bunch of times after that, but that was my first attempt. And if you noticed, I missed my second cue in the first chorus. Completely just botched it. Completely botched it. That's okay. That will haunt me forever. (laughs) But we did a show one time in Reno where every band playing had to pick another band and play a bunch of their songs. So you like, we picked Kiss. So we played five Kiss songs and two of the Kiss songs that we wanted to play that Mark was like, we're going to do these. I couldn't learn them. I couldn't do them. And then I learned that Gene was actually a really good bass player and he had way more, way more bass skills didn't have sweet bass skills like Gene does. Uh, the Dark Smoke, rock on, Nick. Look, I'm trying. I'm going to buy a guitar. I'm going to spend way too much money on a guitar and an amplifier, and I'm going to turn it up to 11 and get like, you know, a super fuzz pedal and just, just gonga. That's what I want to do. Last one here from Southern Comfort. We had three, wait, what does this say? I had three of those. Centurion, stainless, black, and gunmetal. Flavor is terrible. Yeah, the flavor is not great. Uh, Asgard 30 replaced all of those way better. Yeah, the Asgard 30, I, you know what? I don't know. I'd like to put these head to head. It's still doing pretty good. It's vaping as good as any cloud chaser that I've tried. As good as any cloud chaser that I've tried. Laser drill, <laughs> laser drill, matching carpet. Laser drill has been dismantled for now. I'll put laser drill together for next week. We'll chase some clouds and we'll play with laser drill, okay? We'll do that in the vlog next week, I promise. Only my patrons have got to see laser drill so far. <laughs> Fucking laser drill, that's ridiculous, laser drill. Um, so let's end this here uh, vlog here on Thursday. Let's just taste some liquid because I can. We got some Indonesian e-liquids to taste today. In addition to the mung bean, these came from Bioni. Uh, they had a quarantine cloud comp or a quarantine trick comp, which I thought was really, really cool. And they sent me a bunch of liquids and I've been wanting to try some more of them. So I'm going to let you guys decide right now. Jordan, you're a new patron. Yo, yo, welcome to ya. Laser drill rebuild. I know. I know I need to. Uh, we got some Bayoni liquid here, and I'm going to let you guys decide. Do we taste ice lemon grapefruit or Irish cream tobacco? Iced lemon grapefruit or Irish cream tobacco? Do, 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 lag, 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 lag. It's like 20 seconds long, the lag. Vote for your juice that you want me to vape. Boom, boom. Vote, which liquid? Just waiting on the lag. 
In fact, while I'm waiting on the lag, go ahead and fucking hit that like Look, button. Smash that like button. Just punch your computer for me. <laughs> I love that guy. Oh, oh, I'm getting some mixed uh, Irish cream. Okay, yeah, Irish cream, Irish cream. Neither, neither, sick boy. Lemon, go full brain freeze. Irish cream tobacco, Irish cream tobacco, grapefruit, Irish cream tobacco, Irish cream tobacco, Irish cream tobacco, Irish cream tobacco. I think we're going with Irish cream tobacco. I think Eve, evil women, come on. Irish cream tobacco, Irish cream tobacco. Nick likes tobaccos, I do. See, I was leaning towards the Irish cream tobacco. Okay, let Schneeko decide. <laughs> well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fill up this uh, disposable sub tank that they sent me. It's a Bayonne branded disposable sub tank. And I'm assuming they sent this so that I could taste the liquids out of them. Yeah, I will mix them together. No, I'm not going to mix them together. We're going to do Irish tobacco. And while you guys are here, uh, don't forget Look, to hit that like button. That will help like me out a lot. Just punch your computer for me. <laughs> I have a hard time priming up these disposable coil heads. All right. Disposable sub tank. We're going to fill it up with Bayoni Irish cream tobacco. Now, I have never had an Irish cream e-liquid flavor before ever in my life. These bottles look neat, but they're a little bit of a pain in the ass. Little bit of a pain in the ass. That's okay. All right. We got you full. I'm going to be putting this on the deaf mods. You know, the Satan one with all the pentagrams and Baphomets and stuff all over it. And the Grim Green logo and just Lucifer 9000 on there. You know, that's why the non-vapors have the view that they do of us. Because we put Satan on things. Irish cream tobacco. Let's see what this resistance is checking out to. Uh, let's see. Resample, resample, resample. Yes, 0.24. All right, so let's turn this to about 60 watts. All right, I'm going to take my inaugural toot, let you know how it goes. Okay, okay. Here's what's going to happen right now. I'm going to just sit with this for just one second. I'm going to give it some give it some vapes. We'll come back. We'll talk about it. So the first thing that's going to happen is I'm going to kill my audio like this. My hold music is not working. Okay, there it goes. Okay. Whew. All right. Okay. Now we're going to taste it.
Okay. Okay. This, this is some weird, weird ass fucking e-liquid. So here's what I'll say. It's sweet. There is some real sweetness to this. I have a feeling it's going to be a coil killer. The Irish cream component of it is really forward. Really just Irish cream. Just punch you like vulgar display of power. Punch you in the face with Irish cream. There's a little bit of like cedary, nutty sort of tobacco on the finish, but it all honestly kind of blends in with the Irish cream because the Irish cream is so forward in this. This could not ever possibly be my alder pairing liquid. Yeah. Having some beer, having some cocktails, maybe some brown liquor cocktails, maybe some scotch, maybe some bourbon whiskey in a glass with just ice, you know, like that's how you drink it. This would be an ideal e-liquid for that. For like a refreshing summertime light flavor? No, this is a heavy flavor. It is heavy and it is Irish cream punch in the face. And a loud tank. It's an Irish cream punch in the face. That's how I'm describing this. Really nice. In fact, it almost... Like if you've ever had Irish cream, that alcohol note that's in Irish cream, that alcohol note that's in Irish cream comes through in this. Like there's there's a little bit of like a liquor, liquor note to it. Wow, that's a trip. Dude, that is a trip and a half. Well, there you go. It's Bayoni. You know what? Let's try a Bayoni one again next week. We'll put the ice out there again, and then I'll pick another one, and then we can choose between those two because they sent a bunch, and I'm kind of fascinated by it. I I like tasting e-liquids that aren't just United States e-liquids or aren't just, you know, mass-produced e-liquids. Try some Indonesian liquids. Try some UK liquids. That's why I was on that super good kick for so long. There's a little off note to this, okay? If I'm being really honest, there's a little bit of like a weird off, like farty, (laughs) like farty type of flavor to this. It's a little farty. If I'm being honest, it's a little bit farty. Damn, well, it's a little bit farty. So what we're gonna do right now, we're just gonna take this vlog out. Let's Let's, that's all you get, some super chats. I appreciate you guys being here. Um, Trey Watt, Trey Wyatt, sorry. Uh, Thank you, Nick. You get you guitar. I'll break out my drums. We can start a fucking band. We can call ourselves Truth Butter. Your thoughts, bro. Look, if you're into the Doom Stoner Rock sound, I'm in. Let's start a band. I'm sure I could rustle up a guitar, another bass player. A guitar. I'm gonna play guitar for sure. I'm gonna learn. I'm gonna teach myself how to play guitar. Trey Wyatt. Shit, let's do the damn thing. Brandon, very gracious of you. Still using the billet boxes, Nick? Oh, baby, yeah. They uh, they never leave my desk. I got Bluegrass, Harold, and Golden Boy. Whoops, firing all together right now. At least uh, Harold was. Yeah, uh, they're awesome. That evil alien, I'm liking it more and more every single day. It's good. It's got uh, that own boy punched in there. Still using them, Brandon. Still using them. Southern Comfort, your Instagram post got that damn Midnight Oil song stuck in my head. Yeah, but here's what I'll say. You're welcome because that song is awesome. That song is incredible. I didn't appreciate Midnight Oil or that song until like 2000. It must have been 2017. Must have been 2017. We were at the ECC squad house and Matthias from Lundeberg Custom Tattoo Supply in Sweden, in Urisaham, Sweden was there. And I was just ripping shed time, just shed time to the moon and back. And Matthias played this song. He's like, this is, this is one of the best songs ever written. And I am just tear my face off, 
just so shed timed out. And I'm just sitting there with my eyes closed, listening to this Midnight Oil song, and I loved it. And I just kept listening to it over and over and over again. In fact, I created a playlist on Spotify that's all my favorite Shed Time songs that I listen to. They, and they're all bangers. <laughs> they're all bangers, bro. Trey, uh, I would move to Cali and start a band with one of the only Grim Green any day. Look, Trey, I'm not telling you to move to California. Please don't move to California just yet. You know, there's an auditioning process that has to go on, right? We got to see if we can even jam together. And I have to actually purchase a guitar and then learn how to how to play that guitar. So this might be a, a sl- <laughs> this might be a slow process. Tom Sharo, I want to join the band. I play banjo. Do we need a banjo player, Trey? Oh, I don't know. Listen, Tom, I'll put you on the maybe list. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Appreciate you, Tom. Preacher Gaming, very gracious of you. Hey, bud, have you seen the sup box from SXK? I have not, and you're not the first person to ask me that today. Who else asked me that today? Real uh, Light Bearer asked me that earlier. No idea what the sup box is. No idea, but I will definitely look into it. Like I said, I, you know, and this isn't an excuse. I spend a lot of my I spend my time uh, on Twitter and reading studies and articles, and and I try to keep up on vape stuff as much as I can. But a lot of it just uh, it slips through the cracks, man. And I'm trying my best, but I'll check out that sup box from SXK. Vape and case, farty cheese or farty eggs? Neither. It's like farty Irish cream. It's still really good. And I only get that every once in a while. I only get that every once in a while. Anyway, here we are. We're winding down to the end of the vlog. I'm going to have a ton of links in the description, including the Getting to Know Grim Green Spotify playlist, which is packed, packed with bangers. I'll pick out another record next week. Packed packed with bangers. But uh, thank you guys. Fucking seriously so much for watching. You don't know nicotine premiering this weekend in Milwaukee. If you are within 100 miles of Milwaukee, drive there, go see this movie. We need to promote this movie uh, as much as possible. I think it's going to be an industry shifting movie. I think that this is going to shut up a lot of people. And I think it's going to be... I'm really excited about it. I'm just really excited about it. I want to support Aaron and I want to support this movie. So with that said, thank you guys so much for coming out to watch the vlog. I love that you love the vlog because I love the vlog. Everybody that here that makes it to the end, you're just my favorite people on earth. You're a group hug. If I ever get the chance to meet you in real life, I do dispense crisp, crisp high fives. Maybe after quarantine, we'll social distance fist bumps, but fuck it. Let's just go in for, for full hugs. Appreciate you guys being here. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, no matter what anybody tells you, vaping is and will always be at least 95% less harmful for you than burning deadly combustible tobacco cigarettes. So yeah, you guys, be excellent to each other. Peace.